What's going on everybody? It's Mr. Gap here and today we're going to be talking about one of the coolest adventures in American history, the Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. Listen closely children and you shall hear of the Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. As I said, Paul Revere's Midnight Ride story is one of the most famous in all of American history. Because there was this famous poem written years later about Paul Revere's Midnight Ride, most people think it was just Paul Revere who warned the entire countryside of the Redcoats coming. But guess what? He had help! He had a lot of help, most notably from two other riders named William Dawes and Samuel Prescott. So when we talk about Paul Revere's ride, it's important to remember that it's just not about Paul Revere. These two other guys, William Dawes and Samuel Prescott, helped a ton. Paul Revere did a lot, don't get me wrong, but he can't be taking all the credit. You could say the story is missing some pieces, you know, like, like a piece of pizza that's missing pieces, or a piece of pie that's missing some slices. Really any circular food object that's been somewhat eaten already and missing some of the original. It's missing stuff! So in this video we're going to talk about the three main Midnight Riders, their roots and the importance of the ride and what it accomplished in American history. So Paul Revere's ride happened in mid-April of 1775. Now at the time there were a lot of troops in Boston. Basically the king sent a lot of troops over to keep the colonists in line. The king was all like, eat your vegetables! And the colonists were all like, no! And won. So there were a bunch of troops in Boston trying to keep the peace and making sure there wasn't an outright revolt or revolution. It didn't work, obviously. Spies learned that the British were going to try and move out of Boston to arrest two very important founding fathers, Samuel Adams and John Hancock. They were two very outspoken sons of liberty and really just a big thorn in the side of the king and parliament. So they were like, Get him. Sam Adams and John Hancock were both in Lexington, so the troops were going to move out to Lexington to arrest them. They also learned that after their stop in Lexington, they were going to go to nearby Concord and destroy a supply of weapons and ammunition that the Colonials had stocked up. Which they weren't supposed to have. Naughty, naughty Colonials. Anyway, so the British were going to be on the move, so they had to be warned. That's where Paul Revere and William Dawes came in. Alright, number one, they were going to warn Sam Adams and John Hancock because they said, guys, you got to get out of there because they're coming to arrest you. And they also had to warn the countryside, or the townsfolk, the militia. Remember, at the time, we did not actually have an army. All we had were militia, which were normal people who would take up arms to fight. The militia had to be mustered, or called out to action. You could just be eating dinner, you know, blah, 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 and you, know, you hear the call? Alright, honey, I gotta go. Gotta go fight the Redcoats. Save some meatloaf for me. So not only did Samuel Adams and John Hancock have to be warned, but the whole militia had to be mustered, or they had to be prepared. So that's what the point of the Midnight Ride was. Paul Revere had set up a kind of early warning system in the Old North Church in Boston. Boston is way different today than it was back then. Boston, right now, is mostly filled in or man-made land. I'm gonna put some dirt in it and pew, land. Humans are amazing creatures. But during those times, Boston was actually mostly surrounded by water. And there was only a little passage which you could get out called Boston Neck. So when the troops were going to move out, they had to decide, are we going to go across by boats? Or are we going to come out through Boston Neck by land? So Paul Revere set up this warning system in the Old North Church, which you could see across the ocean, one if by land, two if by sea. So once Paul Revere saw the two lanterns in the Old North Church, he knew. They're coming by sea, and I gotta warn everybody. All right, he got on his horse and he rode all throughout the countryside, yelling and warning people, "The British are coming! The redcoats are coming!" I've seen a lot of different people say different things. Some people even say, "The lobsterbacks are coming!" All right, really, he was just yelling and screaming, "Get up! Get ready! They're coming!" And he rode his horse extremely hard. He didn't stop. All the while, keep in mind he had to avoid British patrols. This was not like a happy, like, oh, I'm just kind of going on my horse. Hey, British are coming. Okay, cool, see you later. Hey, British, oh, Steve, what's up? Yeah, the British are coming. Yeah, I know, right? He was like <laughs> He was moving fast and furious, pushing his horse to his absolute limit. So you'll see on this map, Paul Revere started on the northern side, and he warned all the people to the north, riding throughout the streets, yelling and screaming, and trying to rouse the militia. William Dawes, on the other hand, started a little bit earlier. He started out of Boston Neck, and he did the same thing, working with the southern side. Eventually, they met right around Lexington. Now, they were able to successfully warm Sandy Adams and John Hancock, and they got out of there, and they were also able to get the militia ready. So you can imagine when the British started marching on Lexington, and they were like, okay, we're going to arrest these people, and all of a sudden they get there, and there are about 80 militiamen waiting for them on Lexington Green. All right, who spilled the beans? Jack, was it you? 
Can't keep a secret, man! After a brief stop, Dawes and Revere then moved on toward Concord. Right after Lexington, Paul Revere and William Dawes met a young man named Samuel Prescott. He was enlisted in their cause. Both of them were very tired and so were their horses. So Prescott was charged with keeping up the warning system. Right around there, Paul Revere was actually captured by a British patrol. Dawes and Prescott got away, but Dawes was actually flung off his horse. All right, and his horse just like ran away. He's like, I'm tired of you, I'm done. So Dawes had to walk home. So Prescott actually completed the last part of it by himself. Prescott's the one who warned everybody after Lexington, so he had a major impact in getting the outside militiamen ready for the next battle at Concord. So even though Paul Revere was captured and William Dawes lost his horse, they did what they set out to do, which was to muster the militia and warn anybody who might be in danger from the British moving out. As I said at the beginning, it is a really awesome story in our nation's history. These guys were tough. All right, gritty, sneaky, all right? But they did what they had to do in order to spread the message. And because of that, the militia were ready. The most important thing to remember about Paul Revere's ride is that while Paul Revere did do a lot, William Dawes and Samuel Prescott also played a huge role. So we should call them the Midnight Riders. Okie dokie, everybody, that's that. That's all I got for today. We ride! <laughs>